What just happened? I don't know, man. Those are the moments right there. Make you feel the most alive. Look at that freaking brute. That's a four-year-old buck. I just shot the biggest buck I ever had in Michigan. Michigan. The will of a man and the heart of a child on Michigan Gone Wild. Michigan Gone Wild. Michigan Gone Wild. Like right now, I'm a, we're just a bullshitting, talking kind of a night. Yeah. Sitting at the table right now and. Perfect. Um, just got done eating a good dinner and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. you want to introduce yourself. All right, yeah. My name's Brian Hauer. I'm the owner of Untamed Archery here in Marion, Michigan. Uh, been been running for almost four years now. And, uh, yeah, it's been a blast. It's a, it's a ton of fun. It's surreal still. Well, I bet. A uh, nice little town like that, nice little bow shop. And I, yeah. I'm lucky enough to to show up and have a bow built build by you. So yeah. Um, yeah. very uh very family friendly place for sure. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. My wife made sure of that. Because oh, we've, yeah. got, we've got we've well, got actually we'll maybe by the time this airs we might have four children. Oh really? Congrats! Yeah, dude. yeah. Thank you. We're due Saturday, so. Is that is that the last one, or are you doing this about? Is it. Four, yeah, yeah, this is it. Yeah, this is it. That's it. It's plenty. <laughs> Four's plenty. Right on. Yeah, I I would stop at four too. Um, yeah. I got a I got a house a household too. I got um, my girlfriend has two, and then I have the one, so we have three in my house right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you. They're fun though. They're a ton of fun. I think you've told me the story before, but how do, how'd you how'd you start the shop up? So it started actually. A buddy and I made plans to go shoot a three D course okay. downstate that we had been to. I was living downstate at the time, um, just doing heating and cooling, and this was just kind of a hobby that I did in the basement and work on my buddy's bows and build arrows for him and stuff like that. And uh, we go to shoot this 3D. Of course, we'd set it up and, hey, I'll meet you, you know, this time and we'll go shoot. And we get there and it's closed. There's no targets anywhere. There's no people anywhere. It's just shut right down. And so we're like, well, I guess we'll go. He's like, I got a 3D target in the backyard. Let's go shoot that. So we went to his house and shot for a little bit. And I went home and the wife says, man, you guys made it through that really fast. And I was like, yeah, they're closed. And uh, she says, we should move back home and open up a bow shop. And then everybody's, <laughs> then everybody's always got a place to shoot. And I was like, you're out of your mind. There's no way we're doing that. She's like, well, we might be. She's like, I wonder if, cause her cousins were the realtors on this building. Okay. Yep. And she's like, I wonder if they've still got that building for sale right downtown. And I was like, it doesn't matter. We're not, I'm not quitting my job to go open a bow shop. She's like, well, I'm going to schedule an appointment. We're going to go look at it. And I was like, doggone it. She's just persistent. And uh, I, I was like, whatever. We can go look. But I'm not. I love my job. I, I really enjoyed doing it. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we schedule a showing. We come look at the place. Well, first I asked her, I said, give me the dimensions of the building first. Because we got to put a range in, obviously. So I need to know the dimensions to know if that's even possible. And so she gave me the dimensions and it was long enough to put a 20 yard range in. I was like, well, that's, I mean, I guess it is a possibility. Like, okay, let's look at it. We came and looked at it and I just dove head first into it. And it was, I spent a lot of my downtime. Like when I was not at work for the next several months, I was researching or trying to set up, you know, and you were all the work. You were still living uh, down south or downstate at that time. Yeah. Yep. So we were still about halfway between Flint and Lansing at the time. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we it was it consumed <laughs> about all of my time. We had one child at the time, and then during the planning process 
found out she was pregnant with our second. So I was like, well, does that change anything? What are we thinking? You know, do we, where do we go now? And uh, she said, well, I think if we don't continue with this, we're going to regret it forever. So the ball's already rolling. Let's keep rolling. And uh, so, so you say bow shop, is that all you have, correct? You just, you're just, it's doing strictly it. archery. archery. Yep. Strictly archery. Right on. Yep. We've got everything archery in the retail side. I've got a service area I'm in the service area right now. And then we've got a eight lane indoor range. And that, that's amazing. We, you know what I mean? Me and my boy went there that day to build that bow and we were, we're yeah. I think we spent eight hours there. It was a while. It, yeah. It was a good time. It was a great, it's a great time. You know what I mean? He was, I was, uh, he was, um, he'll be nine. So he was seven at the time. Yeah. And he never, not one time asked, are we going dad? Are we going? Are we ready? <laughs> are you ready to go? Not one time. He enjoyed the whole time there. Good. Well, and that's one of the things that my wife was insistent upon is having a kid's area. Mm -hmm. So I've got a, I've got a futon. I've got a ton of kids toys that are over in the corner. We got a little TV stuck in the corner and we can turn on PBS kids or Disney plus or what, you know, anything. And you got, so we got kids shows running. You got most of all, uh, all the bow brands out there right now. Don't you know? Right here. Um, I've got Matthews, Hoyt, Bowtech, Prime. Uh, I got one elite in right now. Uh, Bear. Right, right on. Yeah, that's the yeah, those are my compounds. The most big names, anyways. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you still get the? Do you still see those uh, new faces coming in? Yeah. Do you? Yeah, I've still got. There's still a lot of people learning that I exist. Mm-hmm. Which I love it, and it, I appreciate it, and I am grateful. But a little bit of that, like, drives me crazy because I spend a ton of money on advertising. You know, I've got a couple billboards going. I've got ads on the radio. I'm like, doggone it. How do I reach more people? The, like, the people that I'm not reaching. So that's still a fun part of it is trying to figure out that strategy to to let as many people as I can know that I exist. Oh, yeah, for sure. And this is one step right here. Right. Um, this is my first podcast. So your pot, your first one. We're breaking your cherry the first time. That's today. right. Here um, we go. Yeah, like uh, me and Elvin and uh, Jake's been talking. The, uh, I'd say the last three months, and I called you that one day and chatted yeah. with you. And um, Elvin's getting a new bow this year. Jake's on the fence right now on a new bow. Um, he has. Uh -huh. He he ended up getting a Matthews. Uh, Oh, it's a little bit older one, but it's like brand new, and uh, yeah. it's one of them solo cams. Okay. And uh, he missed that deer in Ohio, and he just isn't feeling the bow. So I think he's gonna be—he's on the fence right now for a new bow. Yeah. But uh, um, confidence, confidence in your equipment goes a long, long ways. All oh, right. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. That bow might shoot. That bow might shoot perfect, but if you don't have the confidence in the equipment, man, it just—it derails you mentally, and that's. Well, a huge part of it. The confidence in the equipment and the confidence in yourself. That's where, yep. I mean, we're going to break right down to it right now is the summer shooting. Yeah. Um, that's, I think, to me, is the biggest thing. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge to make sure because, you know, it comes back to the confidence. If you've shot that equipment over and over and over and over again, you know what to expect. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't have that. Well, some people do, but for the most part, you get over the like jumpiness on your trigger and flinching. Yeah. You know, your body naturally, if you hit, when you hit the trigger, your body naturally wants to brace for impact. Yeah. Yeah. And as you shoot more and more and more, you learn to control that a little bit more and you know to, what to expect and you know how it's going to feel in your hand. So the guys that just grab their bow middle to end of September, open the case up and say, all right, I'm going to go fling a couple arrows. <laughs> They've not got that they're not mentally prepared no. for all of those things. No. And some people, I mean, sometimes it works out fine for people and that's, that's fine, but you're still not setting yourself up. Yeah. My dad's one of those people. My dad, you know I mean? It's, uh, let's just say two days prior to opening day, he's out there shooting. Yeah. Um, but the confidence, not only in yourself, but the equipment, the equipment is the biggest part. And I'm going to be yeah. completely honest. I've never, Ever, I'm 33 years old, and I've never had a guy go through my bow like you did. The stuff you like did, to, the stuff you did to that bow, 
and then we did the paper tune. And literally, I think you maybe tweaked it twice after the paper tune. Yeah. And we went out to the amazing range you have. And <laughs> uh, we shot. And I was, it was just when you watch your bow guy do the stuff you do to the bow, and then you go out and you shoot it, it it feels like the bow is a part of you after that. It was amazing. It was an amazing feeling. Well, that's all yeah. I have to say right there. I'm gonna well, thank you. I might leave it there, but I'm it was it was it was confidence when and you didn't have an issue, you know what I mean? Obviously we were making a video that time, but uh um you don't have an issue with the guy watching you and Oh not at all. No, that's why I've got the service area open. All right, yeah. You so can when watch we were the building, whole thing. Yeah, when we were building the place, that was kind of part of it is to have the customer engaged throughout the process and to be able to see everything as it's done. And it also, I mean, a kind of a bonus to that is I can, as I'm in the service area, I still can watch the shop and see everything that's going on. I can greet customers as they come in, but yeah, to have somebody standing, you know, right there in front of you at the, when I'm at the press and I'm doing something. Yep. And then when it comes time to shoot through paper, you know, when we get everything set and we're going to tune it, Come, you know, come in, come into the service area, come back here with me and we're going to shoot right back here in the service area. And so that's, it just, it, it helps because you watched everything. It's a confidence again, like you say, yeah, it's, you, you know, exactly what was done. You know, somebody's not taking your bow yep. hiding in the back and, you know, maybe doing nothing and saying, oh, here, it's fixed. Go home. And, and that's when to go from there to my next uh, thing I'm going to say is. Uh, Jake on that bow is not being confident in his equipment. He mm -hmm. just thinks there's something about it. And I said, dude, you bring that bow and have the mindset of maybe buying a new bow, but let let Brian touch that bow, get that bow paper tuned, yeah. set right to exactly to your standards yep. before you switch because he likes the solo cam. Yeah. He just, the bow doesn't feel right in his hands. Yeah. If that makes sense. He likes the bow and how it shoots. It just, yep. he, it does not feel right. And at that point, a good, a, a good bow guy, I'm a down to earth bow guy, build your bow. It just gives you that confidence. I think anyways, that, um, one on one is where I was getting at yeah. on that, that one yeah. on one. Um, there's nothing wrong. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with those bigger shops or anything. No, but not at all. Those those shops there, you're dropping the bow off and you're coming to pick it back up the next day. So yeah. you know what I mean? And you you still got that service, but at the same time, you know what I mean, it's nice to know, hey, I, I got a little bit of tweak in here that just feels wrong. And you could I bet you don't even have to look at the bow and you probably know what's wrong with it. It's I mean, there's so many things that are going through my head right now actually about what <laughs> what we could I mean, there's a lot of things it could be. You know the peep might not be in the right spot for him, so he's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, draw length might not be perfect. That that's what that's what got me was. Um, I mean, I've shot well fifteen some years at a certain draw length, and you you're like, no, you're you're you don't feel comfortable at your draw length right there. And, yeah. You know, I mean, we just did it like any other bow shop would do. But you just tweaked it just enough where I, I don't know. I, th I think I went a little bit shorter than what I normally do, yeah. And it made my trigger where my trigger sits on my face and everything, and where yep. my nose hits is yep. was way better, way comfort, way right. comfortable than what I was shooting before. If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, if you're comfortable, it's easy to repeat. Yes. That's the biggest thing in archery. I mean, we have to. You have to. Everything has to be repeatable. You have to repeat your steps the exact same every time. And if you're uncomfortable or you're contorting your body to get there, mm -hmm. it's going to be real rough to replicate that the exact same way next time and the next time and the next time. And I went from a 70-pound bow to a 60 just because yeah. how much I shoot now. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm one of them guys that um, – uh, there's a, you know, I mean, those cold, cold days in the winter, I don't shoot as much. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I get a, if we get them 40 degree weather days in the winter, I shoot. Yep. And uh, I'm one of the people that bring my target in and ain't out in the weather and stuff. But, yeah. Summer shooting, is there, there's a question I was, I had written down. 
Is there anything a archer should look into if he shoots all summer? Is there little things that you should be aware of, if that makes sense? You know, yeah, I mean, I shoot, absolutely. You know, I, mean, I shoot once, and this is no joke, I probably shoot at least two, three times a week. I'll get out of work, mm-hmm. I'll shoot my bow three, four times, and I put it away. Yep. I do yep. it all week, all, all summer long, every week. Yeah. So is there anything that, you know what I mean? So let's just say we, I shoot the bow six times every week, you know what I mean, 24 times a, a month. Is there anything yeah. that I should be worried about on these summer days and stuff shooting that much? No, 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 not at all. Um, okay. As far as you're saying, like, equipment, like, is there anything yep. to keep an eye on with equipment? Yep. No. No. Nope. Nope. Your equipment will be fine. Nope. I wouldn't leave it in the trunk of your car no. <laughs> and go to work all day. You know what I mean? No, no. But, but no, that's, yeah, I mean, that's that's great. Exercise it. I mean, keep an eye on your strings. If they start fuzzing, throw some wax at them. Right on. But, yeah, I mean, something to try to keep an eye on as far as the shooting is what direction is the wind going? Because when we're in the woods, we don't know. You know, I mean, there's going to be different winds, and we try to play on our our stands according to how the wind is. But how is that going to affect your arrow? Watch that arrow in flight. Okay. If a cross, you know, is a cross breeze gonna gonna take it? You know, tail left, tail right, whatever way the wind's going. Pay attention to that. And how does it impact the target when that happens? And so just try to keep an eye on. Hey, I've got a pretty stiff wind coming from right to left and i notice that it is pushing that arrow when i get to 40 yards it does push that arrow you know a couple inches over keep you you know kind of make a mental note of that because we want to try to prepare ourselves for any unknown circumstances that we find ourselves in and believe it or not you bring that up uh we were talking about that in ohio during bow season this past year we had a couple windy days Mm -hmm. and I mean, when I say windy, I mean windy to the point where we a couple of the guys got out of the tree a couple of times and yeah. Um, but yeah, we we never thought you. Know, I mean, if it's a windy day at, at the house, you know, I mean, I'm not shooting. Right. And this, I was believe it or not, I'm looking at my my. I got a whiteboard that I have hanging up in my house, and I got mm-hmm. like little goals and stuff to set and what I want to achieve in the year and stuff. And one of my goals is to shoot on windy days to yep. make sure i shoot on windy days and rainy days yeah so yeah you br- that that's a you know i didn't even have that on my notes to bring that up but that's a great one right there 100 <laughs> percent. yeah and it's it's also going to affect how you hold your bow mm-hmm. because that wind is going to press on the side of your bow you know so how does that affect your hold for sure now um talking about you know i mean going out to 40 yards 50 yards 30 yards 20 yards now do you have a opinion on shorter bows and longer bows i have a shorter bow i don't know if you remember i got the matthews vxr 28 yep and when i grabbed that it was against it was i was pushing towards either that matthews or the prime and the prime i think was 30 inches at that time that i was looking at that year it should it was probably a 31 31 yeah it was probably the black one yep and uh so i was going back and forth on it but that i went with the shorter one and it was it just felt right you know what i mean i'm a, I'm a shorter yeah. guy i'm five seven just a little right. guy My, yeah you don't have a terribly long draw length no no and uh some people say you know what i mean who wants your arrow longer and your bow and stuff like that? Right. Do you do you see more people going shorter or longer on those on certain bows? Do you? It's it's pretty even. Pretty I mean even. the the saddle hunting getting bigger and bigger yep. has pushed some of those guys. You know, a lot of those guys like a shorter bow. Okay. And it makes sense. You know, the versatility it makes a lot of sense. Um, the I just... longer your longer riser is going to have a little bit more stability as far as like how it just how it holds okay when you stretch out that length where you're pulling from it it makes it a little more stable a lot of it though is it comes back to comfortability if you've got a string angle that you prefer so like i you know i want the corner of my mouth 
on the string, you know, to run through the string, the tip of my nose to touch, and for me to have my head, you know, pretty well, you know, at, at an upright position, in a comfortable upright position. I've got a 30 inch draw. So my, I really don't feel as comfortable with anything. I like maybe 33. Okay. Right, the ball I'm shooting, the ball I'm shooting right now is 34. And that is, it's very comfortable. Well, and that, you know, I mean, I went from the Matthews Monster, and I think that's a 32 or a 33 inch. Yep. I and think so. uh, I was, that was m- one of my biggest concerns when I brought it to the shop there. I even brought it up to you. You know what I mean? Going from a longer bow to a short bow. But the yep. second I shot, you know I mean, the first time I shot that bow was at your shop. You know what I mean? Yep. And I, it was, I was confident in the whole thing. I didn't even, didn't even realize it was a shorter bow, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, the riser is so long. Matthews is putting a really long riser on their bows right now. Yep. So if you were to hold the monster up next to your VXR28. Yep. I'll bet we'd find that the riser on your new bow is longer than the riser on your other bow. Okay. So that helps a tremendous amount. And that's where Jake's at too. Jake, um, he he had the monster too, and then he goes with that mm-hmm. solo cam, and I think that solo cam is way lighter for sure. For one, you know, what I mean, Matthew, uh, the monster is an older bow, right? But man, does that monster have that dude? That bow has some power behind it. <laughs> Yes, but it, it feels like it. No, it's no wonder he likes the solo cam. It's a whole lot better draw cycle than that monster was. Oh, it is. He said he can hold. <laughs> like when he had that deer come in, he said he he held that. Um, in the video, uh, missing that buck in Ohio, he I, I forgot how long he said he held that as draw, but he said he can hold hold that all day compared to that Matthews yeah. monster. That monster, you could you could hold it for thirty seconds, but after thirty seconds, you're you're wanting yeah. to let that thing down. Boy, they were, it was, it wanted to go too. You give a little bit, yep. you relax a little bit. She was, she was ready. Yep. Well, and Jake was very impressed by that. Uh, the, I do believe it's the new prime with that let yep. off. Yeah. So he's really pushing towards the prime. If Jake gets anything, I think he'll be getting the prime. Yeah. So they did a really good job this year. Yes. I like that bow. Yes. And uh, you know, I mean, if somebody from Prime is listening on this, we 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 don't say no to sponsors. You know, if anybody's <laughs> listening, because <laughs> right, I'm company, not gonna because I'm not gonna lie, I like that double cam Prime that they came out years ago with, and uh, buddy of ours. Well, they were, yeah, they were. They had the parallel cam system for a long time. Yeah. And last year was the first year the inline yep. they went away from that parallel cam. Yep. And last year's bow didn't do as well, at least in my shop and a few of the other guys I've talked to that own shops. It didn't do as well. It had a little bit of a hiccup last year. I didn't think it was a bad bow at all. Um, I think a lot of people were a little hesitant because yeah. of it was such a big switch for them. But this year, the RevX, man, I, it feels it's a nice draw cycle. The bow shoots very well. They've always been a very well balanced bow. And it's just their design with uh, with where you hold the bow, yep. you grip in the center of it. Yeah, I haven't had and the opportunity to shoot the new one yet. Yeah, um, they feel, they they've done a good job. I was a little bit discouraged when the news broke that they were going to be draw link specific mods, because now as I mean for the for most people it doesn't matter. Right. As a dealer, now I've got to stock mods. Yep. But when I talked to them. They said, if you ever need to just swap mods with us, send them back. We'll send you whatever you need for nothing. Right. Yeah. So that that's awesome. That's really, that went a long ways for me. And they sent me a set of all of the mods for nothing. Oh, no So I shit. get one set. I get one set to start out with, and that was that was huge, too. Right on. Yeah, um, Matthews. Matthews is like that, too, correct? I think that's how my boat no, set no. up. No? Well, you, I, I can swap them for you, but I, yeah. I've got a... I've got a thousand F seventy mods, and uh, I talked to my rep. I'm like, "Hey, buddy, is there any way we could swap some of these out for something I don't have?" And he's like, "No, no, you hang on to them. Them are yours now." <laughs> yeah, um, but that's all right. Uh, did did I now? Um, do you guys have a three D range now? I do. That's I thought I saw that. I I, yes. I mentioned it to Jake and Elvin too. You know what I mean? I'm, we're we're probably gonna make a whole day out of everything. <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah so how's that going is that going good it's going well actually i've got guys out there right now tonight's league night 
Oh, oh yeah, I did see that. That's where I saw it. I saw it again tonight. Yeah, yeah. So I got a handful of guys out there shooting right now, guys and girls. Is that is that uh, in the area of the shop or? Yeah, it's about five miles from me. Okay. Okay. So a buddy, a buddy I went to high school with, I ran into him one night because I bought the course because I had an opportunity to buy it, and uh, I didn't have anywhere to put it, but the price was right, and I had to. I figured it would be a good move for the business. Oh yeah. And. I was like, I'll take them, and I just stored them in my dad's barn because it was. I bought them in January. Okay. So I put I put a pile of foam in my dad's barn, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Then I was like, I got to figure out somewhere to put this. So it was still the ground is still frozen. There's still snow on the ground. When I talked to a buddy of mine, I'm like, Hey, you don't happen to know anywhere I could put a 3D course, do you? You know anybody's wanted to lease any land? He's like, yeah, I've got 20 acres. I was like, that'll be perfect. I said, let's go walk it. So we went and walked the property, and it was frozen. So I was like, dude, this is going to be awesome. It's so, you know, there's a lot of thick spots through here. Yep. This is going to make for an awesome course. And we started clearing lanes and starting to kind of set up how everything was going to look. And as the ground thawed, it's wet everywhere. Oh, man. It's a swamp. So it took, I'm going to say an extra month, month and a half to build like a, like wooden walkways. So I've got probably three, 400 yards worth of wooden walkways built just so you're not, and it's as, and then as I opened it and people started walking, yep. more wet spots opened and more wet spots opened. So I had to go back through, build more, build more. So I've got, there's still some wet spots now, but it's been pretty dry so far this year. We've, it's not great, but for the sake of the course, it's been kind of nice. Right on. Well, you know, I mean, there's but, there isn't too many out there for 3D. No, there's not. Ranges. There's not a ton of them. We we got one um, just 30 um, miles south of us right now, and it's um, Hanson Hills and Grayling. And they yes. got, you know, I mean, it it doesn't take long to get through it. But nope. they just they got a nice course. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know what I mean. For me, my kid, you know what I mean. My kid and my um, stepdaughter and stuff are down there. So mm -hmm. if so, a sport goes longer or something for practice, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I got a two hour window to shoot, so I go over there and shoot all the time. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're actually so I'm part of some untamed archery as a club. I yep. created a club. And so as a club, we're part of the Straits Field Archery Association. Oh, okay. And so um, it's Northwoods. Northwoods Archery is yep. at Hanson Hills there. They are also part of the Straits Field Archery Association. So we all have tournaments that we, like indoor season, yep. they're, they're, always, they're always our first tournament. And then we have our meeting afterwards. And then we set up the schedule for the year. At the end of the year, at the end of indoor season, we have a meeting. You know, how did all, everything go? How did everybody like anything? Should we do anything different? And then we also schedule our 3D tournaments schedule. And so actually, this weekend, the 10th and the 11th, well, when this airs, it'll be last weekend. Yeah. Um, but is our first outdoor, our first 3D tournament, and it's at Hanson Hills there. Oh, it is? It is. I didn't know that. Man, I need... I. Dude, I've been so busy at work, sports. We had an eighth yeah. grade graduation last night, and yeah. then I also do a side work on my own. I've been so I, I Facebook is like a ghost to me right now. So <laughs> I've been off it, and you know, what I mean, I took we I, my, me personally took a couple weeks off for the whole podcast stuff just because of the sports is just right. insane right now, and then graduations and work and stuff. And uh, but yep. so so you guys got a tournament coming up this weekend. Right. Yep. Is, is so there's so the first yep our first shoot of the season is this weekend and it's with that one it's anytime Saturday or Sunday it's cards got to be turned in Sunday by six o'clock. Okay. But so what yeah, I you're around. so what I do what I'll do Brian is yep. I'll um I'll get on that website you got you guys probably got something on Facebook on it. So yes. What I'll, do I'll invite is, you. I'll invite you to the group. Yeah, invite me, and then I can share it on my page because by the time people listen to this, it's going to be the weekend after. Right. So, right. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, is it like a 
just come and show up type thing or yes yeah we like people to shoot in pairs just to keep everybody honest okay but yeah so they've got the first one then the next one so it's every two weeks okay and there's one there's the schedules on there there's one weekend where we skip okay a week in that one there's two weekends between the two shoots but yeah they've got the first one i've got the one in uh, two weeks from then let me see i'm looking at the calendar looks like the 24th 25th will be here in marion well that to believe it or not i'm gonna so marion you're gonna be in the 24th and 25th the 24th i'll be at hanson hills for uh cross country oh nice (laughs) (laughs) Um, so is it, so you got, is it, it's a two day event or is it one day just shoot, and one yep, day? Just two day. Yep. Just one, just shoot one time, but we leave it open for both days in case somebody's busy. Oh, okay. It's I got not you. a, it's not huge. It's not a, there's not a money prize. Okay. It's, we kind of, the way we kind of run it is it's good practice for like state level tournaments you know yep it's a time to especially indoor indoor it's you know everybody shoots together we usually have two to three line times okay that run and uh it's just shooting around you know a handful of people you know more people than you're used to if you're shooting in your backyard or something yep and uh it's just a good prep this just circles right around for you know i mean practicing in the summer you know what i mean this is good summer shooting right here i I like the 3D range, you know what I mean? So it's a ton of fun. Mhm. Lots. And uh, yeah. you know what I mean, that just gives you one more opportunity, one more excuse to get out of the house and shoot your boat yeah. too. So yeah. get away from the yep. wife, the kids, or bring your right. kids. You know what I mean? I, yep. what give I them do. a bring. Yeah. I bring mine all the time, so and he yeah, Absolutely. And it's one of them things that um I don't. I just don't see a lot of kids being like, uh, oh, "Dad, are you ready to go yet?" And mine doesn't, anyways. But he's, right, he's raised a little different too. So <laughs> right, <laughs> it's normal to him. <laughs> it's yeah, it's just another day. Yeah, but that's good. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that you know, I mean, that's one more thing to put on your calendar for summer practicing. And like yeah. I said, three D. You know, what I mean, not everybody can afford them kind of targets, and it's just nice to go to those right. places. Right. Go shoot I'd like. I, yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing more of 3D ranges in Michigan. That'd be nice. It would. It would. Sure. There. There's getting to be less. I feel like. Yes. There's the one that I bought. I'm the fourth owner of some of these targets. You know, some of the targets really? I bought are branded for the company that owned them, and then they sold them to this guy you know I, I i know a little bit of the history of where these you know have been and people come in and say yeah i had those targets and i sold them to so-and-so oh, really? so yeah as far as i know <laughs> i'm the fourth and some of them so you know i've replaced yeah i don't know probably six or eight of them since i because i opened last year and so i've replaced a handful of them i donate actually one of them i donated to the guy that ran the course before the year before when i sponsored his course yeah. So I knew I knew that target was new, so that was good when I bought him. But it's it's a ton of fun. It's it's actually hard to get the word out about it. Yeah. Though it's it's same thing, you know, as with the shop. You know, I actually just talked to my guy with the radio, and we're gonna start a radio ad, hopefully within the next day or two. So, so about the course, so people hopefully more people know it's there and come shoot it. So we're start. So they'll be in Hanson Hills on it'd yep, be 10th, June, 11th. June tenth and eleventh. Yep. Skip a week. Yep. Right. And then the twenty yep. fourth and the twenty fifth, you'll be down in. Yep, we'll be in Marion. Marion, and then after, yep. and then the second or two weeks after that, you'll be back in Hanson Hills. Is how you're doing? No, it? so we've got we've got Kingsley also. So okay. Grand Travers Grand Travers Archers Association. Okay. I'm, is they've got their course set up at the Kingsley Sportsman Club. Okay. And that one being a sportsman club, they've got line times. So they've got, I want to say it's one or two times on Saturday and one on Sunday, I believe is how it fell. Right on. But they can't, being they've got a gun range there, they're not able to just leave the gates open and say, everybody show up, you know. There's an event here, show up whenever and shoot like the other two courses can do. Okay. Yeah, we're, you know, I mean, we'll we'll try to push it too on our page a little bit. 
Um, well, thank you. You know, I mean, help as much as we can because we, you know, what I mean, we don't want you to sell those targets to somebody else, make a sixth owner. <laughs> right. I'd like to be the last <laughs> owner. I'd like to be, I'd like to replace more and more of them, but right. I got to have more people shooting. You know what I mean? No one, you know I mean? I knew I saw that and then, you, you know what I mean? Bringing it back up, you know what I mean? Knowing that, you know, like I've already shot at Hanson, so I'm for sure coming down to shoot down there too. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's been I've a, actually got to, I've actually got to put some different stakes in on a couple of my, on a couple of my stations because when we shoot for the straight field archery association, there are parameters. Yep. So I've got to have a stake for youth and trad that's a max of 20 yards. Oh, okay. I've got to have a stake for bow hunters. So if you shoot bow hunter class, it's a max of 35 yards. I and gotcha. then open class, open class is a max of 45 yards. Right on. So I've got a, I've got a, actually, so last year when I opened, I had, my goal was to beat the longest shot that the guy before me had. So it was broken arrow is what the course was called before. Yep. And so at Broken Arrow, he had his moose set at, I think it was 84 yards. And I said, well, the only goal I have is to beat that shot. <laughs> so through the swamp, I just blew out a lane and I got to 94 yards with my moose. And so at that, I got two targets per station. Yep. And so I had, a, I had a buffalo at 82 and a moose at 94. Did you end up hitting it? Yeah, but... <laughs> I had enough people on my leagues that were like, yeah, we're going to take, you know, my wife is going to take zeros on that one. Or I, I, I'm sick of losing arrows. I'm not shooting that. Or they, you know, shoot under it and lose them. Cause I put a net behind the uh, moose yep. to try to catch arrows if you miss. But I mean, at 94, it's not real hard to sway a little left or right and miss the net too. Yeah. Yeah. So I moved this year. I moved the, I left the bow hanger. So if you want to shoot 9482, you can stand right there where the bow hanger is and shoot. But I moved my stake for my leagues up to 60 for the moose and oh, okay. 48 for the buffalo. Oh, I got gotcha. you. So then people aren't hitting, because I had, I had to go out there and trim the trees several times because people were hitting branches 15 feet off the ground trying to launch them in 94 yards. Do you change, so I had to, do you change it up when you shoot? Do you use your um, hunting bow? Yeah. For yeah. 3D, I like to run my hunting setup. My target setup is pretty heavy, and I've got an eight-power lens, and it's it's tough now to is, see. Is, is your, it's tough to see everything. Is your uh, brother finally beating you now? or you guys, Not yet. Not yet? <laughs> he's, he's, still, he's catching me real fast. <laughs> is he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right he's, uh, he's... He practices way more than I do. I'm going to have to... Now here's a here's a question for you. Um, when you yeah. switch, do you do you stick with the same kind of arrows or no? For, for so if you're doing your 3D range with your hunting bow, you're pretty yep. much staying with the same arrows that you'd use for hunting. No, no. Okay. So I've got light. I've got lighter, faster arrows for yep. 3D. Okay. So I can I know that I'll get you know 100 yards maybe a little beyond i'm at right now i don't have vein contact till about 104 to 105 yards okay um my hunting setup i'll be probably closer to 80 i'm gonna guess okay. i don't know i have i just fletched up my hunting arrows the other day i Did haven't you? even got them yet see now so i'll probably get slapped on the hand for this but yeah you know I mean i'm one of them guys that um don't put a lot of time in my arrows i should say you know what i mean yeah uh, i think jake is the same but, yeah you know what i mean we got a certain um i can't even think of the arrow right now they're maximums you know what i mean i just go to jay's yeah. it's yep. local um yep. they're like the middle range price of the arrow and i go in yeah and i'll buy a half a dozen and i i shoot them all you know what i mean i don't yep. shoot them till they're gone yep you know, and i don't know i I kind of get smacked on the hand by certain people, and then other people are pretty much the same as me. Yeah, you know, I, I catch an arrow. You know what I mean? I'll I'll switch out the broadhead, or I'll switch out the practice tip, seeing maybe oh, maybe it's just a practice tip. But then that arrow right. is shooting the same every time. I usually just take that and put it off to the side. But right, mark um, it. Now, what about you? Do you do you do a lot of time with your arrows? Do you? Um, 
A uh, little bit, yeah. I've done. I mean, you can get so carried away with an arrow. Bow. Oh, that's that, and it's it's a ton of fun to do. Yep. But it's not at all necessary for most okay. people. You know, it's it's something fun to do. It's something you can give yourself a little bit of an advantage. But, I mean, I've killed deer with a 380 grain, you know, Maxima blue streak when the blue yeah. streak was a thing. I was a real light, fast arrow. I was chasing speed. And I killed several deer with it, you know, just a 100 grain tip. Yeah. And then the you know, last two years, I ran a 605 grain arrow. Okay. It was the Victory Vap SS. It's got the stainless steel woven into it, so it's real heavy. I put a 95 grain insert in it. I put a 150 grain point. And it's just, it's kind of fun. Yeah. And it, it slows your arrow down, but it quiets your bow down. So there's give and take on all of it. But it also hits the target harder, doesn't it? It Yeah, it hits hard. It hits pretty hard. Because um, I, um, I did that too. I, I, I mean... I went to I keep I keep going back on broadheads, you know what I mean? Um I'm one of them guys that you know, I don't I don't care for the most part, I don't care what other people think. You know what I mean? I'm gonna shoot right. what I like. And yep. I've I've switched back and forth. I went to fix and then I went to mechanicals and I'm back to my mechanicals right now. But I'm yep. also shooting a heavier bow or a heavier arrow. Yeah. And um so I think the whole setup's like five something. Like, yeah. I, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not really into my arrows that much. You know what I mean? I make sure everything's straight and not right. all messed up, but I think it's like I five. Like, I like 500. Do you? Yeah. I do. I do. I just, the, so the arrows I just recently built are the Easton Axis 4 mil. And okay. I put the 95, I put a 95 grain insert into it. Yep. And I'm back to a hundred grain point. Um, It keeps your front of center up there. You yeah. know, it's got, 195 grains right at the end of it out of your 500 you know so yep. basically 200 out of your 500 is right at the very end um and so that's gonna still hit good but it's gonna i'm gonna get a little more speed back i'm shooting a slower bow this year okay. just a little bit but i think it's the arrow speed probably will end up faster once i get done with 3d season and yep. i'm ready to tune because my 3d arrows are a five mil Okay. So I'm gonna have to shoot through paper and just make a slight rest adjustment. I'm sure. You know, um, and uh, so, well, this is a long time ago, but you know, I mean, back when I shot my bear, I used these, the mechanicals that I'm using again now. But I've also, yep. back then, if I remember, so I was only shooting like 300. So I went to the, I had the arrows already, and I, you know, I mean, I was going back and forth to what broadhead I was going to use last year, you know, and Jake went back to uh, mechanical, and I'm like, ah, eh, mm -hmm. man, I really like that one I shot my bear with. But it, I, what happened was, um, in Ohio, my first year down, I ended up hitting this big, tall, tight, just a beautiful. It should have been on my wall. It yeah. I literally shot at the exact same spot I shot my Ohio buck this year. I mean, yeah. to the T, like we can go back to the film, the film, I had, um, the wrong camera lens or something. So it was blurry. We couldn't use it, uh -huh. but we can go back and literally the arrow hits the same, goes in the same depth and everything. The only difference is, is the weight of the arrow. Yeah. It just seems like every deer I've shot now with that, um, being a 500 with that same mechanical, it just seems mm -hmm. like it it made it way better. I don't, I yeah. don't know, that little bit of confidence too. Cause I smoked a right. doe this year and even Elvin came and uh, helped me get the doe out. And it's opening day. You know what I mean? We were in a hurry and stuff, but it just opened up in the, when I shot my bear, it didn't open that bad. But yeah. the only difference I did was the, I just went up a little bit. You know what I mean? I yeah. went to a 500 and it seems like it's, it helped out a lot. I mean, I, it, it will it'll i mean if you hit any i mean a rib bone even it's gonna yeah. it's gonna affect that arrow well the more that arrow weighs the harder it is to stop its momentum right yeah so there's a point to where you can get carried away a, a good friend of mine it had been through two or three years two years ago i think yeah two years ago built an absurdly heavy arrow we were at, he was just shy of 800 grains <laughs> and he was 
and it was it was coming out. He had a VXR thirty one and a half, and it was coming out like I want to say two hundred and nineteen feet a second. Yeah, <laughs> but it hit like a hammer. Oh shit! It was ridiculous. <laughs> and he, I mean, he shot he shot a doe, and he wounded her. And so he it was kind of rainy, and so he backed out, and got in his truck, started driving out. He's on, he on state land. He was driving out. The doe was laying in the field, like head up, looking around, laying in the, like on the edge of the trail. Yeah. And so he stopped, grabbed his bow out of the case, grabbed an arrow, knocked it and shot her through the like brisket, but went long ways. It came all the way out and went beyond and stuck in the dirt. Really? Yeah, that's, that's absurd. <laughs> that's not, but, is, is he still shooting those? No, no, no. They're they're here though. He left them here. <laughs> they're hanging out. I got a lot of my buddies that come and shoot leagues in the winter and stuff. Yeah, leave their old arrows, target arrows. I, I got above my light fixture in the service area. Yep, just littered with everybody's arrows. <laughs> and so yeah. it's kind of cool. So as I'm talking to a customer and I'm explaining to him something like, "Hey, I, you know, you could do something like this," and I can pertinent or anything i can come up with i can reach up and grab an arrow and say something kind of like this or you can get carried away and you can do something like this or you can do a little more modest build and do something like this so it's i they're out of the way they don't you know they're not interfering with anything i do and they're a great example so i tell everybody if you want to leave your arrows here leave them here because i'm going to grab them and use them as an example <laughs> now now you got a bunch of arrows that are robin robin hood too now has your brother uh beat you on that yeah. yet What's that? Does your brother have more Robin Hood arrows hanging way up more. than you do? Way more, but he tried. <laughs> he, he 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 hasn't done it in a long time. But well, he got a Robin Hood recently. But a while ago, he would just buy a dozen of my cheapest arrows and try to do it. And just just take them out in the rain <laughs> and smash them. The first time he did it is when I got the Carbon Express Predator. Okay. And that, at the at the time, that was my cheapest arrow. And he's like, let's see how these arrows fly. <laughs> and he's like, don't even cut them because he's a 30 and a half inch draw. Okay. So it's, I mean, they're, they're like 31 to 32 inches. I don't remember. Full length. So he's like, don't even cut them. Don't square the ends. Don't do anything. Glue an insert in, put a tip in it, and I'll take them. So he takes them out to the range. That same day, he stuck six of them together. So he had three Robin Hoods that day. Oh, no and shit. The, the next day, he did another, he stuck another two together. So he's down to four arrows. And he's like, well, get me back to a dozen. So he bought another eight arrows. And he's, but yeah, t a ton of the arrows that I've got Robin Hood sitting up in the, you know, in the, mm -hmm. from the bow hangers are most, a lot of them are his, probably more than well over half. Or ones that he's done, but it was all on purpose. So that's and like like I said before, I don't. I, you know, I mean, I'm not big on arrows. I I pick an arrow at my local shop here, Jay's, and uh, they treat us good. They're and, great. Um, so I I go in there and I get just the arrows that I like, what I can afford. You know, I mean, I'm just a normal yeah. guy like anybody else. You know, I mean, I'm not gonna yeah. go out. And, but uh, was it? I think I saw a post. It was either you or your brother. With those um, fletchings, um, I've never seen them before. I can't think of what they were. They looked like a, like a rubber fletching, but real small. Oh, it might have been. So my buddy James that helps me out in here, he did the zinger. Okay. Veins okay. at one point. It was a short stint. He had those running. And he, he liked them. They flew fine. Did um, he actually, yeah, he did. Uh, he had a Robin Hood it. 50 yards of them outdoors one time i think i think i saw a picture of something like that it's possible yeah okay yeah yeah they were yeah, just, he, they were just a little them. different you know what i mean i was like man what they are, are those yeah um, they're they're supposed to they're designed to just they're like a silicone okay. and they you just slide them onto the shaft and leave them be and shoot them and he had a little bit of trouble with them wanting to slide and so the i think the design of them is they'll pop off if you shoot through an animal Okay. So you've got a real good idea where you where that animal was standing. Oh. Um but he ended up super gluing his. Oh. <laughs> but he doesn't he doesn't hang on to arrows real long. No. No, so they Yeah, um, I don't think I don't think there's anybody that's gone through more arrows since I've been in business. So I had a question come on 
or come to me a couple weeks ago from a guy. Yeah. Um, what What's your opinion on the difference between the three and the four fletching? Ooh, that's a good one. So more surface area is going to catch more air. Okay. Um, so what I do, I, but you've also got the weight, you know, the four fletch will add weight to the tail of your shaft, which is where we don't really want yep. extra weight. So what I do is my target arrows for indoor are four fletched. They're a longer, shorter profile, but, um, I four fletch those. My 3D arrows, I four fletch in like a, I guess if you're looking down the knock, yep. I turn the knock so it's like a multiplication, like an X instead of a plus. Okay. And the reason for that is it buys me more clearance with my sight housing when I get out to further distance. You know, if I had a odd vein sticking up, it's going to contact that housing yep. earlier than if I turn it and I've got that x on my veins okay so that's my reason for that and it's a really short profile vein again for site clearance and that's why i put four of them and i'm never going to my 3d arrows i'm never going to screw a broadhead on i glue the points in so I, I don't have to keep tightening them yep so i run a short four fletch on my 3d arrows my hunting arrows i do three and a little bit longer so like i run boning's heat vein okay. on my on my hunting arrows because they're stiffer so they're not going to be quite as loud and fluttery as a blazer yep that's what i have on these ones are i think are those blazers blazers yeah yep. and blazer is they're a phenomenal a, they're a shorter so yours are so yours are a little bit longer than the blazers yep so saying. the blazers okay. are a two inch the blazers are a two inch vein and the heat is a two and a half okay it's just a little bit i want to say i'm not looking at the information right now but i want to say the the blazer vein is a 0.5 inch height the heat is like a 0.41 maybe okay i don't know but it's close they're close they're close to the same height one's a little shorter but it's a little bit longer so surface area is gonna be close to the same okay and also you've got to think about your diameter of your shaft so if you're running a really small diameter yeah as that point pushes through the air it's not going to disrupt the air around it quite as much as say you know my great big fat target arrows yeah. for indoor are really big around so if i try to put a really short vein on that and not very long the air is disrupted for so long that it doesn't catch the air as well okay so with a skinnier shaft your length of your vein off of the off of the shaft is less affected and it gotcha. matters more i guess or it means more at the sh even at the shorter length okay now do you change your knock too when you're doing all your you know i mean doing your preparation for the the arrows and stuff do you do or you just stick with the same stock I, so i usually do but it's only for aesthetics okay so i like so right now my hunting bow i put blue strings on it Okay. And my 3D arrows and my hunting arrows have two blue veins. So my 3D arrows are, oh, what are they? Two blue, one black, and one gray. Okay. So they, they alternate. I got black, blue, gray, blue. And then my hunting arrows are two blue heat veins and one black. Okay. Yeah. I, uh... And so I put blue, I put blue knocks in them. Just so everything would match. Believe it or not, I bought my. Yeah, I'm a I'm a cheap guy. I'm a, I'm a old school, just cheap. But I bought yeah. my I bought first time ever. I bought Luminox. Yeah. And compared to where it snaps onto your bow. Yeah. The, it just it seems like it's way better than just the stock ones or the upper. If you yeah. if you do get ones off the shelf or something. The Luminox just seem like they snap better on the string. Yeah. But that's my first time ever really changing the knock on it. So I didn't know if there was like, like, like I said, I'm not an arrow guy. So, you know what I mean? I right. was just asking, seeing if there was like other knocks that people put on because of a certain, if it does a certain thing, does the knocks yeah. even mean anything? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, okay. so there are some knocks. So I, so 
uh, Victory Arrows right now are running AAE Knox. Yep. Or there is what they send all of them with. And I really like those Knox a lot. They're very short and they're, it's hard to explain without you looking at it, yep. but the material next to, like where the tabs come up, okay, next yep. to where your next to where your string sits in them, is a little bit thicker, and so I just I like how beefy they are. I guess is a is the way to explain it. Okay, they're yep. not they're not terribly long, creating a weak point. Yep. So there are some like well, Carbon Express. Carbon well, Express is Carbon Factory Express knots. is right now. You know, what I mean, I'm looking at three of them right now in front of me. Mm-hmm. I got a um, they call it the I, I think it's the blue, the red, and then I got the ones that I use this year. They're that I think they're SD something, and literally all the knocks are different. Yeah. Yep. I had. And here, I had here I am. With... Here I am shooting uh, the same arrow, same yep. broadhead, same practice tips, but all my knocks are different. <laughs> well, as long as they're the same, <laughs> as long as they're the same knock, even if they're different color, that's okay. fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I got my my Luma knocks. You know what I mean? So I'm one mm-hmm. of them guys that I shoot all my arrows. You know what I mean? I don't like. Keep one off to the side. I, w- I want to shoot all my arrows so I know all of them are going to shoot to yeah. shoot an animal. So here I yes. am shooting two of my Luminox, and the rest are just the plain stock ones. Am I screwing myself? No, no. Okay. How do they How do they compare? There, I, I, I don't see much of a difference. Good. But, Good. you know what I mean, after talking yep. and hearing myself say this, now I kind of want to go out there and shoot two of them and see if there is a difference. <laughs> right, because so there will be a difference in the weight. Okay. So it'll be a different weight. Um, are they Luminoc brand or are they just lighted knocks? Nope, they are Luminoc brand. So, so I was Luminoc told. Brand. I was told about the weight. You know, I man, I kind of, yep. kind of had that in my head a little bit, but it was yep. like, like when we, like when we put it on the scale, I think it was, it wasn't like crazy or anything. So I don't think my mind really. Yeah, probably, set probably to within it. ten or twelve grains. Yeah, I think that's is what yeah. you'll find. Right um, and so you'll notice it more at distance. If you shoot those arrows at 60 yards, you might notice a little bit more drop at 60. At 20, you're probably not going to notice it. Okay. So that's another thing. Summer shooting, that's another thing to keep in mind as you're doing that this year. Test it. Yeah. Oh, Test yeah. it and find out. And I've yeah. got guys, too, that'll buy, you know, an extra pack or two packs of lighted knocks just to and it just shoot them the, you know the time the first time they shoot them they'll just leave them right they'll leave them turned on yep. let the batteries die i don't care i just want to practice all year with the exact same weight as my hunting arrow well just so that's a ton of money to spend as, on as you speak as but. you said that because i shot my bow just the other day and both of my luminox didn't work <laughs> Yeah. So, you know what I mean? It is what it is. You know what I mean? I, I think it was a two packer, you know what I mean? So it was something cheap. I I was like, yeah, you know what? I want to yeah. try them. You know what I mean? It made yeah. a big difference come camera wise, you know what I mean? Oh, but a ton of difference. besides that, you know what I mean? It was nice to go back on the camera and really see where the arrow went. And then, yeah. you know what I mean? Obviously, the, the arrow fell out of the deer like 20 yards after it ran, but it was just cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was nice it to is, see it in the film. Especially for camera. Yeah. yeah. It, but I mean, anymore they've blown up so much the lighted knock industry that there's not a ton of people that don't have them. Right. You know, as as far as the people that I see, yeah, I sell. B- believe it or not, just to just throw us out there, but like Jake, Elvin, Aaron, um, Tony, the our little hunt group that goes to Ohio and our deer camp. Um, I'm literally the only one of Luminox. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had to, like I'm sitting down at camp and stuff, and they're like looking at my bow, and he's like, "You got Luminox on there?" I was like, "Yeah, I, I ended up buying two, and they like giggled a little bit. I'm like, oh, "Come on, dude!" I'm gonna... <laughs> and then, well, we saw it on film there, and they're like, "Ah." Elvin said he used them back in the day, but he hasn't got them recently. But yeah, he also goes back and forth on bows all the time too. So, like right, right. now, he's he's so he sold his bow, and he's. Hey, he's going back and forth on the prime and the Matthews again. So, yeah, I, well, me personally, we'll I, hope they, I hope they do get a prime. That way, I can use them as a guinea pig. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're. You'll be impressed. I well, actually, James, the one that builds all the arrows. Yep. Um, he's been a Matthews guy for the last couple of years, and 
He ended up switching. This year, yeah, this year he decided that he's like, man, I don't think the Matthews is different enough for me to, like, it's not worth the change. Yeah. But let me shoot that prime. And so he shot the prime, and he ended up getting the Rev X six. Okay. This year, and it's he loves that thing. Um. So, swinging back towards the arrows and going towards yep. the tip of the arrow. Yep. Now, as a own business owner, mm-hmm. um, do you see more mechanical or fixed broadheads going out? So. It's a trend. Is there's it? trends. There's trends. And right now, at least the last two years, I've seen more people switch to a fixed blade head. Okay. And last year was the the biggest jump. But I, 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 I'm hesitant to say it. And I don't know if it's coincidence, but I had more people come in here and tell me either there was a very – spotty blood trail or they did not recover their deer and i don't know if right i i'm hesitant to say that they're related but those are just the things that i witnessed well all the years we were talking about it the other day um i should have six six more bucks on my wall right now thank god i don't because i don't have the room (laughs) but i should have six more deer and yep. I'm talking about uh, four Michigan big bucks and then yep. two Ohio bucks. Yep. And on all six deer, three were shot with fix and three were shot with mechanical. And they okay. pretty much the three that I shot with the fix and the three that I shot with the mechanical are pretty much all the same shots. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so if I shot one in the chest area, I shot yep. one either with the fixed broadhead or mechanical, and yep. it's I I think it comes down to me. I think it's whatever you want to shoot and what you feel comfortable with. Yes. That's one of the reasons I switched. I was so confident in that broadhead when I shot yeah. that bear, and then I had one one issue with one deer out of five deer. And yep. it made me switch, but like yep. Jake says, it. How many times did you mess up on a with a deer with a fixed broad or fixed blade? Well, yep. yeah, that's the reason I went to a mechanical in the first place. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it all it all definitely comes down to uh, the guy pulling the trigger. Yeah, and where that shot, where that shot breaks and where it lands. Yeah, and, it, and you can kill him with a field point. And if you, you catch know? if you catch me in the woods walking down the trail and you look at my quiver, I have a mechanical and I got a fixed blade. Yeah. And believe it or not, when I'm out here shooting, um, my mechanical comes with a practice tip. Yep. And then I shoot the fixed blade just to, so I'm confident with it, and yep. I can switch the broadheads and swap the arrows, the shafts, to them, and they yep. shoot the exact same. That's what they should do. You know what I mean? So you know, yeah. it's it, it just comes down to confident on the the equipment that you're using too. You know what I mean? I I know I'm getting a blood trail with that mechanical. Yep. You know what I mean? It's going to be on me if I shoot it in the right spot though. Absolutely. Yep. Now, now if I get a fixed broadhead and I shoot that same animal, it's going to go. It probably go through the deer. But am I going to get that yep. blood? Right, but it's gonna go. The, it's gonna penetrate better for sure. Yeah, and but, but at the same time, that deer might not run off as hard as he does with the mechanical getting shot with the right. mechanical. So it's like, right, it's whatever I think is what you're confident in and what you yeah. want to shoot. But then there's a lot of guys out there that just shoot whatever your neighbor shoots, kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just it's one of them questions that needs. To, I always like to ask. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it's um, cuz you be there's a lot there's a lot a lot that goes into cuz you'll go you go to J you go to Jays, you go to Dunham's, you even go to Walmart and there's going to be come deer season there's like five guys just staring at broadheads. Yep. There's <laughs> well, so many to I, choose from. I don't know what to do it's here. It's outrageous. It is insane how many's out there. And there's all you know what I mean, you can go cheap, you can go expensive and there you can go really expensive on broadheads and it's just Oh yeah. There's so many choices out there, and it's hard to choose. You're just going to have to do it what you 
feel comfortable shooting and then also you got to take that chance too you don't know yeah but, yeah Yep. And a lot of guys are, Hey, this has always worked for me. I'm going to stick with it. Yeah. You know? And then there's guys like, I don't think, I don't think I've ever shot the same broadhead two years in a row. I've switched. Sometimes I'll switch, you know, mid season. And after you said that, I don't think I have either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jake sticks with his, I think he, he switched there for a minute. He went to fix broadheads too. um, Around the same time I did. And, uh, but he always keeps going back. He, you know what I mean? He's a rage guy and yeah, he ends up going back to those. Yeah. Um, my rage, my rage hypodermic is my best selling broadhead by a mile. Yep. That's what I think. That's what the one he has. And, yeah. you know I mean, I was in Ohio and I had an issue with a, my quiver. Um, mm-hmm. and then we walked you know, two, three, four miles back into the woods and you do not want to carry your bow. I don't care how light your bow is. You do not want to carry the damn thing. So I always put no. it on my backpack, and I yeah. learned my lesson there. You know what I mean? I got a nice backpack a bag that carry my stuff now that it won't bounce around and lose shit. But that first right. year That's I important. went down there, I lost six arrows and all my oh. broadheads, and I couldn't find my broadheads at that time. I shot that one deer. Um, so I had three broadheads in my quiver. I shot the one, didn't recover the tip, and then I lost two arrows prior to that because I was on my hands and knees. It's my first yep. time in Ohio in the bushes, you know what I mean, in the mountains. Yeah. Yep. So I lost two arrows. So I went to, I forgot what the, uh, I think it was Cabela's, got the arrows. They didn't have my broadhead, so I went to Walmart thinking that they might have it, and they didn't. I ended up going back to Cabela's and just buying rages. Yeah. And the whole time sitting in the tree stand, I was not confident in those broadheads. <laughs> right. Just because I had, I've had issues with them before. That was one of my issues was with uh, rage broadhead. Yeah. But I mean, was it, what was the blade retention system when uh, you were having problems? Was it the rubber band or the clip? It the was, plastic clip? it was, uh, the clip. I do believe because the plastic clip, the story is, is I shot a doe. It was in October, okay? Mm-hmm. It was an evening or evening hunt, early evening. I ended up shooting this doe. My uncle came out and uh, gave me a hand. It's Jake's dad. Yep. He ends up like, hey, if you, you must have found your deer, huh? He called me up, and I was like, no. He's like, well, your deer's sitting right next to your truck. <laughs> so, so I was like, I walked out there, and he's like, yeah, I got to find my arrow. So we go back to where I shot the deer. He mm-hmm. pulls out the and he's old school. My dad is too. They, they ain't about the mechanicals. Yeah. He rips this this literally full blooded arrow, and the deer it went right through his heart or her heart. Perfect yep. shot. Pulls this arrow out of the weeds and out of the uh, dirt. Yep. And uh, that the broadhead physically did not open up. Yeah. And uh, I was like, "Are you kidding me?" And you know, what I mean, he's just just eating just literally getting right into me on it so i threw the arrow up on the dashboard we threw the deer in the truck well at this same time jake hunted that night well he ended Mm -hmm. up losing his quiver and uh quiver or arrows or something happened i don't remember what happened so he swung we were pretty much shooting the same bow same length and everything at that time he literally swung under my house the following morning reached into my truck, and he's like, ah, I'll just take that arrow. Grabs the arrow off the dashboard, goes out and shoots an eight-point that morning with that broadhead, and the broadhead opens up. It did? It did. We joke about it all the time. It just needed a practice shot. It just needed a practice. It's exactly what he said. He's like, ah, I appreciate the practice tip. Cause he, yeah. So I didn't get the I didn't get the text messages until the next, you know what I mean, until I woke up that morning. I was, you know, I was sleeping in. And, yeah. And uh, he calls me up. He's like, hey, I need – I need uh need a hand and stuff and I was like, all right, let me give me a minute, I'll be there in a minute. And uh so I'm driving there, I look at the text message, I'm like, what arrow did he grab? And I look at my dashboard and it's gone. I'm like, Are you kidding me? I'm like, ah, this is not gonna go what was planned. So I walk up and he has the arrow in his hand and the broadhead's just wide open. I'm like, Did that open up for you? He's like, Yeah, I didn't have an issue with it. So I ended up <laughs> explaining to him and he's like, Hmm, worked this time, didn't it? <laughs> That's wild. I was like, Oh my god. Must have weakened that collar just enough. But just I like, enough. I like their, their uh, no collar anymore. They've yeah. done everything with no collar, so the blades clipped 
together inside, so there's no collar. Yeah. Uh, and I like this system better. I hear less stories like that. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, I shoot the NAP uh, kill zones. Yeah. Same theory as the Yeah, the they've been Rangers. doing it for a lot longer. Yeah. yeah. They had that years and years ago. They had yep. that blade retention system like Rage is using. Yep. Yeah. Um, so do you have anything else going on at the shop? You got anything new? Uh, no, no. I mean, I picked up my Hoyt acquisition is my most recent. I saw that was a big that. one. That's a big that. one that I was, that was my, that was my last holdout. Right on. So from the jump, I've been, it's been a struggle to get big name brands in here. And uh, Matthews was the first to give me a shot. Well, I mean, so I had, that's not fair to say. I had Bear and Elite when I opened. Mocha. And so I wanted Matthews, Hoyt, and Botech. And all three of them told me no initially. Really? And so I was a little concerned on how I'm going to have a bow shop with no bows. Right. But I uh, I was able to survive on Bear and Elite. For the first, I think it was seven months. There's a lot of people that shoot bears still. Yeah. Yeah, their lower end stuff yeah. moves very well. Yeah. Um, But at the ATA show 2020, I met with my Matthews rep. Yep. And and they, they didn't tell me a flat out no initially. They said, why don't you get opened up and get running? And send us more pictures of how the shop looks finished. Because the pictures I had to send in to them was during the construction process. Oh, okay. And so I sent them blueprints. I said, this is what it's going to look like, you know. Yep. Here's the space that we're working with and we're building in. But there was, I mean, there's studs exposed, you know, and walls that were in, still in the process of being built. And a lot of things that we were setting up, just, so, you know, like the wall that we had to put in for the range. Stuff like that, that... uh wasn't complete and so they're like why don't you send some more pictures after you get open and then after i got open you know there was i I just was like let me i've got a decent amount of inventory let me see how this goes we'll you know keep moving we'll be give it a little bit of time build up some money and then i'll approach matthews and see what they need you know if they're interested at all what they need but that was the closest to you know that was the only not no right at the time and so when i met with my rep i took pictures before i went down to the ata show yeah and uh said hey this is what this is what everything ended up looking like he's like all right email those to me and i'll you know we'll kind of have a meeting when i get back and we'll talk about it and we'll see right on. and so yeah they were they said all right let's do it and they sent me you know my, my initial order and then my next one was prime and so once, you know, Matthews and Prime climbed on board, then Botech was like, well, all right, let's try it. You know, let's see what we can do. And, uh, yeah, Hoyt still was, huh. they didn't they didn't think they needed a dealer in this area at the time. Yeah. And then this year, I kept, kept hounding them. And so they finally said, okay, let's try it. Let's, let's see what we can do. And so far it's been a good, it's been a good acquisition. It's been, they've been moving well. Perfect. So I'm grateful for that. You know, if I didn't have anything in here to sell, it's hard to keep running. Did you go to uh, the ETA uh, this year? I did. Did you? Yeah, we're, yep. we we got that on our uh, goal to go to next year. That'd we be wanna, awesome. Yeah, wanna... it's in St. Louis. It's in St. Louis, this this next one. Yeah, we got a, it's we a got whole a, lot further drive. We got a couple, we got a tell the truth we got a pretty good calendar for next year for uh events to show up and show our That's face awesome. and yeah you know, we want to go to a couple atas and stuff like that and yeah we're, we're getting out there we're trying we're trying yeah, we're, but uh um, ata shows a blast you'll that? love that yeah you'll love it it's it's bigger than you could ever imagine and it's just archery stuff everywhere yeah and it's a ton of fun well, you get to meet people too. It's a, it's a, yeah, I think that's probably be the coolest thing. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, yeah. I actually got so two years ago, I met Tim Wells down there. And, okay. Uh, yeah. He he asked me. He's like, you got you got a shop up there? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, 
do you got any blow guns in? And I was like, no, but that's a good idea. He's like, I know you don't because I don't have any dealers in Michigan. I was like, well, <laughs> you do now. And I shook his hand and now I got blow guns. <laughs> oh, no shit. Yeah. Well, I hope my kid don't see those on. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, it's, I've had people come in and be like, oh, I can shoot my buddy when he comes over. And I was like, do not shoot your buddy with this. Like, you'll, hey, it'll hey, go through him. For, it'll for, definitely go through him. For, well, I could say nine because he's going to be nine next week. But uh, for a yep. nine year old, he's a Tim Wells, uh, I guess, big fan, biggest fan. Yeah, I fanatic. Guess. Oh, dude, it's insane. That's awesome. He's a cool guy. He's Is a he? really cool guy. That's, a, that's, yeah. that's one of the things. You know I mean, just meeting the people, you know what I mean? We've, um, believe it or not, I've met a handful of people now, you know what I mean now, but, um, yeah, just shooting around and stuff, but, uh, it'd just be cool to meet people, get yeah. around, get out. Everybody's really, really down to earth too. Now, how Everybody long did you guys shows. go for? Did you go for the whole time or just a yeah. few days? Did you? Yeah. The last two years I've gone a day early for the master class. Okay. And so I go down and the first day before the show starts is the master class. Yeah. And uh, that's always fun because you get like breaks between classes and you get like a lunch. Okay. But every, all the manufacturers are going in and setting up their booths. Okay. So I get, so like new product, I get to, one of the security guards is always not paying attention. So you just sneak in. Yeah. Just walk in like you're supposed to be going in. And so you walk in and you get to see all the stuff a day before it's released to the public, you know? Yeah. So that's pretty fun. Um, um there what's what's the coolest part is uh somebody from Michigan wins first place. That is the coolest thing. Um yeah. uh, oh shit, they're right there. The sticks there, uh the carbon fiber sticks. Oh the latitude, yeah. Latitude guys. They yeah. kick the ass. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, they've got a good thing going. Yes, they do. We uh we ended up doing a uh, podcast with uh, a few of the guys and um I can't even, uh, Kevin, I, I can't think of his last name right now, but, uh, Kevin, he ended up bringing some sticks with him. And then he also, first time Elvin and Jake and I, uh, got our hands on the beast stand. Yeah. We're, I'm not going to lie. We were pretty impressed by it. Yeah. Very, very impressed by it. And we've had lone wolves and, and then we got our, like all three of us got different setups right now. And yeah. I'm not going to lie. I was pretty impressed by the sticks and then. Yeah. As much as I don't want to admit it, the beast stand was pretty good. Yeah. It was, it was light, dude. And yeah. And it was um, thin to your back and the whole nine yards when, when you put it on your back. Yep. Um, But, man, the price is just, that's insane for a redneck hometown right. guy. That's just insane. And then the weight, to, no. I'll yeah. be all right with my extra couple pounds. but Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and Dan, if you're if you're listening to this, uh, you can always send me one. I, I don't mind. That's right. You'll never say no. <laughs> I will never, never say, say no. no. You won't but turn it. You very won't turn impressed. It away. Um, so the master class, uh, what was that consist of? I I saw pictures on Facebook of you. Yeah. So there's a little. It's not a ton of like technical information, but there's a lot of like business related classes in it. So they'll okay. offer every you know, hour they'll offer a new segment and there's two different rooms. So okay. you can pick, you want to go watch a presentation on this or on this. And so you just kind of pick which one you think fits the best in what you need to take away from it. Oh, really? So a lot of like social media stuff and marketing stuff and yep. networking and things like that, that they offer. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've done it for the last two years and it's, I think it's, it's definitely beneficial. You Is take, it? you always take something away. Really? Um, the last class that I took of, of the day this last year, uh, Tim Gillingham put on a course about like stabilization stabilizers. Okay. And so that was really cool. Cause he's known for having wild stabilizer setups on his bows. And, uh, so it was kind of cool to see his bow and him to kind of talk about what he does, why he does it and how to go about, like finding what suits you, I, you know, what feels best for you and stuff, just trial and error and things like that. And Believe it or not, that's, um, that was on my next thing to bring up was a stabilizer. Was it? There we yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. We've uh, seen the transition into it well. Because I uh, watched YouTube and stuff. He has, I think he has a, 
it was either him or somebody was interviewing him or something about that, and I was watching a couple. Because I run uh, no stabilizer at all on my bow. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then you got those guys that run the one on the front, one on the back. I, yep. Um, what do you... What do you see the most? Do you just see a basic stabilizer, or as as people getting more Prob- into it's probably that? still the majority is probably still one out the front, an eight inch okay. bar out the front is probably still the most common. Um, the dual setups are gaining popularity. Yeah, and most of the people, if you put a front and a rear bar on for them and let them shoot it for a while, they'll never shoot without it. Really, there's some yeah. people that some people don't like that added weight and are willing to sacrifice a little bit of the stability for yeah. that reduced weight. But for the most part, everybody. So what about an old? Tri- what about an old school guy that's never used a stabilizer and goes? To yeah, a anything's <laughs> anything's better than nothing. Okay. Yeah, I've what, been, I mean, you know how many times you, I've walked in the Jays and like looked at them and like had them in my hand and walk like. <laughs> I, I'd probably get halfway to the counter and like change my mind, and go back. And I'm like, yep. I can't do it. Well, yep. for one, they're kind of pricey, and then you know, I mean, you can always yep. go the cheap way. But I was always, I've, I've always grew up as the way uh, you you get what you pay for. So yeah, um, I hear a lot of people as they're picking out equi- or picking out stuff to put on their bows. They're like, ah, buy once, cry once. I guess I'll take this one. Yep. Yeah. So I, I yeah. I'm gonna prob that's on my list right now like i said i got that yeah. whiteboard and believe it or not the dual stabilizer is on my list to try it out yeah um, well and especially with it when you look at a matthews bow yep you grip you grip pretty low yep so they're inherently top heavy and they want to tip forward yep so if you put just a front bar on there it still wants to fall forward yep so with a Matthews setup, I would if I had to pick one, I would put a rear bar on before I put a front bar. Uh, somebody else mentioned that too. I don't remember who who it was, but yeah, somebody else mentioned the same thing. Was I with your Matthews? I'd rather do the rear before the front. And I yeah. was like, oh, I never made. Um, but that 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 year that I uh, had the bow build, mm-hmm. um, I ended up getting a GoPro mount for the front, yep. and um. And it was during deer season, so I didn't really shoot too much with it. And yep. it threw my target practicing way off. I ended it up feels it, a lot oh, different. Way different. So I ended up taking it off. And now yep. now if I go ever go back to it, I, you know, I mean I'm like I said, I got it on my whiteboard to try it out. So this year yeah. I'll be I'll be doing the duel. I just I think I'll probably be I think you said it right, I'll probably end up going to it and then never switching it. <laughs> Yeah, and if you do, so when you're looking at stabilizers, make sure that the weight is adjustable. So there are some that are just like rubber covered and you can't add or remove weights from them. Yep. Get one that you can, a lot of them will come, for example, like three and three. So they'll have three ounces on the front, three ounces on the rear. Okay. Most of the time, if you take one off of the front and put it on the rear and run two, four. Okay. It's, it balances better. Does it? Yeah, so for instance, right now I've got a 810, so I've got a 10-inch bar out the front, and I've got four ounces on it, okay. and then I've got an 8-inch eight, eight bar out the back with eight ounces on it. I got you. And that's a lot heavier than most people are comfortable with, Yep. With a you know, for a hunting setup, but man, does it sit still. Okay. It sits so still, and it, it just balances perfect, and you can, with the sidebar mount you can adjust well with almost all of them okay. they're adjustable so you can swing it left and right and up and down yeah. so you can move it until it feels it feels right i got gotcha. you and so there are some people that will move it you know if you i've seen a lot of people that'll do like close your eyes draw the bow back yeah. and look at your level on your site and if it's tip left or right like move your bar in or out to make that perfect and i like to run mine where it's not quite perfect okay. but you've got to have you got to have just a little bit of pressure you know one way or the other usually i like to push with the outside of my hand like with my index finger let's say if we're at full draw 
yep. that side. I like to tip the bow from left to right just a little bit, just to keep a little bit of pressure on it. Okay. And that'll help you be steadier because if it's just perfectly balanced and sitting there without any pressure, yeah. it'll flutter. It'll flutter just a little bit more than if you've got a little bit of pressure on it. Okay. I gotcha. So, uh, so what I'm thinking, I'll get it and I'll just bring it with me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we can set it up. That's um, not a problem. Is there a certain brand that you been pushing I'm running, towards? I'm running Conquest. Okay. Right now, I like their .500, their uh, Control Freak. They're a half-inch bar. Okay. So they're little. So the smaller the bar, the less wind it'll catch. So if you got a, like we talked earlier about a yeah. cross breeze, if you're if you've got a bigger stabilizer, it's the wind is going to affect that more than if it's smaller. Okay. Yeah. And also a reason for all the weight on my bow is crosswind. You know, if it's heavier, it's going to sit steadier and it's going to be less impeded by the wind. Yep. Now swinging around with the weight of the bow and the wind and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So we uh, we touch base the arrow. We touch base now with the stabilizer. My next question is. Um, I, I don't, I, I'm, I, I know I'm wording it wrong, but the site where it yeah. attaches to the bow, we can yes. go inside the frame of the bow now. Yes. What, do you think that is a big factor or just a small positive factor? I think, you know? well, I think, especially if you don't have a rear stabilizer certainly it is okay because you mount on the right side of your bow yep it's going to put that weight over there your rest in years past has also mounted on the right side of the bow okay because that's on that's on my list too on my whiteboard here um i love the site that i have but at yeah the, you know i mean at the time I, I i don't think they came out with it with it a couple years ago I mean, my yeah, so no, the bridge lock. The bridge lock was the year after. Yep. Year well, before. they just came out. Or no, was it two? Years? It might have been two years after. I think it was the same year. It's just I already had the stuff paid for, and, and you know, I mean, oh I'm, right, I'm old school. It's already paid and done for. But because no, I, I think the V3, yeah, so the V3 did not yet have the bridge lock. Okay. I wish I had one in so I could make sure that I'm correct. Well, they, the brand that I, I can't think of it. Uh, I want to say it was a. Uh, it's a three pin, but it's. But anyways, they 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 came out with the um, adapter, so now I can do that on my bow. You know what I mean? Yeah. With my same. You don't know site. what brand. You don't remember what brand you got. Oh, I don't have the bow in front of me. I think it's. <laughs> I think it was the. I think it's a trophy ridge, but it's the oh. three pin. Yeah, yeah, it is a trophy ridge. It's a three pin. Yeah. Uh, where two of them are stay and one's floats. Uh, so is it the hot wire? The hot wire, it is. There we go. Yep. Ooh, I just I just sold out of the hot wire. I'd go look because I've got so there's Trophy Ridge has two different mounting. Okay. So some of them mount the screws go through the top. Some of them go through the side. Yep. And like your digital, your um yeah your digital react, your um. Oh, the Trio Pro, yep. those all mount on the top. So I do have the top mount adapters. You do, okay. I do. But if it's not, if it's a side mount, we can we can get it coming. Okay, right on. Um, but yeah, B three has a site specifically for the bridge lock. Black Gold has one specifically for the bridge lock. Um, HHA has got now short and long dovetails for their tournament edition sites for the tetra and the tetra rise so you can do a short bar which is designed to go into the matthews bridge lock or if a guy just doesn't want a long dovetail so everybody's kind of had to you know have an option because matthews is such a huge brand you don't want to miss out on that so everybody yeah. pretty much has has an option that'll okay. run into the uh, red line right on red line's got them too that one just come in the torch. Yeah, I've been. Um, I've just been. You know, what I mean, little things to tweak the bow. You know, what I mean, just yeah. Anything but you it's do nice to the equipment. That, yeah, it's nice to keep that weight right above you, right yep. above your hand, more in line. Um, the Hoyts have the pick rail on the front, so there's a bunch of companies that have got 
Uh, Elvin, the Elvin, that's what's... Elvin went to, and last year he tried the, um, the Trophy Ridge, uh, the digital. Yeah. One where you can change. I'm gonna yeah. assume. Yeah. He was. He wasn't a big fan. No. 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 He wasn't. He said he. Yeah. He just. I don't know if it was just because we're. Old school or what? But I forgot what the issue was. But um. He he wasn't a fan of the tape, so you could tape it too, so you can double check that it's right. Working if your right. battery, if your battery, battery runs dead. Yep. Um. The tape was. It's, uh, it's on the. It's it's kind of hidden. Yeah. It's a. It's tedious to see it. Yep. And when. You, but it's good as a. I mean, it's a backup. I had to. I I shot the, digital, the React One Pro digital last year. The React One digital. Um. I I let my buddies talk me into trying a single pin. Because I've never hunted with a single pin before, and so I said I'll try it. And I hated every minute of it. It never was an issue. I never ran into an instance where it was a problem. But my anxiety sitting in the tree looking at it, thinking if a deer comes out over there, now I got another step where I got to move this. And I drove myself crazy on it. So that's my own fault, but I I won't do that again. Right. Um, The only complaint I've heard on that site is just it's a little bit heavier. It's on the heavier side of things. Um, Okay. It's Um, really not... It's not tremendously heavy, but it's. I think if you compare it to the Excel landslide, yeah, it's heavy. Okay. He he ran but, he ran stabilizers last year too yeah. on that bow when he went with that um, yeah. site too. So. Yeah. So it was even more added weight. But I'm a big fan of that hot wire because I like the two stationary where I can yeah. set my two and my twenty and my thirty, and then I got yep. a floater. And yep. you know I mean, chances of me using the past thirty is real slim unless that one seventy comes out at. Right, one fi- or at fifty or something or sixty, I right? Might fling an arrow. Then you've got it. an option. Yeah, it's nice to just have that option. Oh yeah, hands down. Um, because believe it or not, I used to shoot. It wasn't a one pin, Brian. It was yeah. a <laughs> back in the day. I shot. It had like four pins, but I'd yep. set the one pin and slide the other ones down. Just get them out of there. Just get them right out of there. And I, this, dude, I, I did that for years. Yeah. And, we're sitting at camp it was me my cousin my grandpa and stuff and uh we we hunted the opening morning and it was so hot we went back to camp and we're sitting there we're shooting and stuff and i'm shooting at 20 yards and here's jake he's shooting at 20 30 40 50s he moves his target way out there and he's shooting he's hitting the target like 80 yards and stuff and he's like you want to try to swing it out there i'm like no no uh uh, well, somebody's trying to call me. Let me see if I can. Yeah, we'll just let it beep. Um, I'm like, no, I only got one pin. He's like, you got other pins there? And I'm like, yeah, I only got to slide it in for 20 yards. He, like, laughed at me. <laughs> so we ended up, for the day, for, just shooting around at camp, I ended up setting 20, 30, 40, and 50. There you go. That My buck that I have on the wall right now for bow season, he came in that evening. At 45 yards, and I ended up shooting him. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that you're welcome. And I'm like, yeah, I appreciate it, buddy. He talked me right into it. Yeah, the deer <laughs> came in. I took his – believe it or not, he, he I'd never had a range finder either. You know what I mean? Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, he said, like, here, take my range finder tonight and just range your trees. Pick your trees right, out. So you got a br- reference. And then, yeah, and then the, you bring it back. And I said, okay. So that's what I did the first two hours sitting in the blind. Yep. That deer came out at 45 yards at that tree, and I was like, well, I'll put it in between the 40 and the 50 pin and <laughs> let it loose. Yep. <laughs> yep, double-lunged it, and I think it it did go like 60 yards, but it was, yeah. I was I was happy I did that that day. And ever that since then, so I've awesome. been, I usually have three or four pins, and then I bought that new bow with the new sight and stuff. I just like that floater just to give you that option. but Yeah. Yep, that's kind of a – it's a really good hybrid because there's people that like just a fit. Hey, listen, I want to fix – I want to know that no matter where I was shooting last time, 20 and 30 do not move, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. And so to have that option – so if you were out at the 3D course shooting at 60 yards and you, you've you got your bottom pin dialed at 60, yep. you go sit in your stand – and a buck walks out at 30, you don't have to even think about, did I remember to move my pin back, you know? Yep, yep. And I, you know, I mean, I still got, 
I, I still make make sure the tape. Um, and I ended up uh, not using the tape that they gave me. I ended up getting online and finding a different tape because I just didn't like it. But uh, yeah, the ones that it comes with are just. I mean, it's just got ash marks, and you just gotta yeah. figure it out, kind of. So the tape setup on that one is not ideal. No, but a lot of guys just put the blank one on and make their own marks. Yeah, and believe it or not, the tape that I bought was like exact what I what I <laughs> wanted. But it, yeah. um, when I put it on, I put it on backwards, so the numbers are upside down. Yep. But if you, <laughs> but if you're in your tree stand and you tip the bow, yeah. Just r- like when I'm in my blind or something, or if I'm sitting on it and I tip the bow just right, I can see the number. I don't know. It. I'm used to it now, but it works. <laughs> it works I don't know better, how, but it me. works. It works. <laughs> but. It, yeah, that floater. And then they also that, you know, I mean, that same site comes with that little Allen wrench that's literally inside the site. So if anything yes. happens, you can, or anything yep. loosens or tightens. That's and nice. The, yeah, it comes with that tool. Yep. And the biggest thing I do, too, is I, I, um, I got a silver program marker, or it's a black yeah. one, or I think it's silver. And I just yep. go through all my sites and all my bolts, and I just put a little mark on everything. Right. That so way you got a reference point. Yeah. So just in case something does come loose, I can go right back to that. And yeah. I'll, I'll be like, yeah, I'm at least a little bit more confident than just putting right. it somewhere. Right. You can put it back to where it lines up, and you can at least go shoot it and make sure that you're perfect. You yeah. Know? Or so, if it's not so you're perfect, not chasing, you you ain't chasing your arrow all night. You can at least get it right. a lot closer than what happened. Right. Um. Because, uh, and then uh, what happened this year, I ended up, falling down the first night in ohio yeah uh so uh i know it's not the safest thing but i'm one of them guys that get down from my tree stand and i walk in the dark to i get so far away from my stand and then i'll turn my flashlight on yeah yeah i screwed up because i tripped and fell and i wear a old school the regular um wrist trigger yeah and i fell down and snapped the trigger part oh, right off it that's an important part yeah <laughs> and i didn't know it you know what i mean i just left it on I right. got back to the truck and stuff and got to the house and and uh took it off my wrist and stuff so i didn't lose it and i'm like what the hell i Something's was lucky enough here. the guy that i stayed with uh he ended up switching the crossbow well yeah. he ended up having the exact same trigger no way but, yep so i ended what up what are the odds it's and, and that's a brand new trigger too. He's like, yeah, I just bought this trigger, and then I ended up buying a crossbow. And I'm like, oh, right on. He throws me the trigger. The trigger was perfect. I didn't have to change anything. <laughs> that's awesome. And then, um, oh shoot, what was the brand of the trigger? Oh, I can't think of it now. Anyways, but um, uh, they sent me a box to send the trigger back. They're gonna send me a new one. Yeah. Dude, I've not. I I've got a lot of manufacturers that I carry yep. in here. And there's not one manufacturer that I can think of that I could name that's not absolutely phenomenal to work with. Right on. Like the archery industry is so so good about like customer service. There's, I, yeah, my brother dropped. He had a True Fire Synapse when we he, when I first got him into like a thumb trigger release. Yep. And he dropped it on the floor and broke the thumb peg off. And they're like, "Yes, yeah, send it in. We'll send you another one." <laughs> we <laughs> sent it in, and they or they sent it back with the trigger. Huh. Um, I had a guy buy a brand new stand. It was the Perfect. So it was a couple of years ago. The Perfect's heavy metal button. Let go of it at full draw, and it was brand new bow. He got lucky. It cut when it came off the string. It hit the the string hit the button yeah and so it unclipped and it spun it'd be to the like if you're holding the ball looking at it, it spun to the left so it missed his rest and his riser and everything and it, he said it hit a tree about 10 yards down and uh it broke every piece except for the brass like handle yeah. so like the extra finger attachment broke off the thumb trigger broke off the hook broke oh, it was shit. it was a mess is yeah it's like somebody purposely broke every part of it and uh, he's like, I need another one. I, it's my fault. I let go of it. I'm like, do you want me to see if the warranty exists? It's a, almost a $300 release. Mm-hmm. 
he's like, I mean, you can try, but I'm, my hopes aren't real high. I'm going to buy another one and uh, let me know what they say. He's like, if they do replace it, I guess I'll have a backup. And I called them and they said, yeah, as long as the brass handle is fine, we'll replace every part of it. Send it in. And which, so I send it in for free. And which so one I was send that? It stay, as a stand. Okay. But yeah, it's everybody's been so so good to deal with right on no well that's good you know what i mean yeah well now is uh so the just uh throw your name out there a little bit more um the shop um the address phone number and is there anywhere we can anywhere else facebook twitter yeah absolutely so we've got so it's untamed archery um Address is 109 East Main Street. We're right on Main Street in Marion. Um, yeah, I, I'm like, I don't know, 100 yards from the from the only. We got a four way stop here in town. Yeah. It's a little town, <laughs> and I'm right close to the intersection. You can't miss me. Um, yeah, we've got Facebook, we've got Instagram. Uh, I got a I got a TikTok account. Oh yeah, and, I've uh, seen it. Yeah, that's basically. <laughs> One, so the dude so I, got, I had a video on tiktok that's got three and a half million views and it was my buddy punching himself in the face shooting a resistance release yep and that's the guy that had the i was talking about the 800 grain arrow oh okay and shot through it. that's him yeah that's my buddy <laughs> travis so we made him famous and so i posted so it happened friday night and i had a compilation i put together because he did he made a habit of this two years ago or a year and a half ago. Um, but he was shooting this resistance release and he kept forgetting to hold the safety down. Okay. And so when it would get not even to peak weight, but close to peak weight, it just let go because he wasn't holding the safety. And so he'd punch himself in the face a couple times. He threw <laughs> his bow down the range. It tumbled down the range. And I made it. So once I like figured uh, on my phone, I can go to my security camera and I can like record yeah my like a screen record <laughs> and so i i started doing that i've got i don't know i think i've got five video i made a folder in my like album my photo album yeah called travis punching himself in the face oh my god and so i've got a bunch of and so i put up a little compilation there's like i think four of the videos are in that one and i put that on tiktok and that was just kind of funny and it never took off and it was just something fun that I could tell my buddy, hey, go check this out. Yeah. And then yeah, I think it was the last night of leagues, not this past year, the year before. He did it again. And so I got on there and I made the recording and I was like, oh, yeah, that'd be funny. We'll put a TikTok together with it. And then I didn't do it that night because I didn't think anything of it. And the next night after putting the kids to bed, I was sitting in the chair and I was like, oh, I guess I should do that. I should put that together. So I put it together and I, you know, I don't know, submitted it, whatever you call it. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. It was probably 20 minutes later, 15, 20 minutes later, a buddy of mine texts me and he's like, dude, that's really taken off. And I was like, Oh, cool. You know? And so I didn't go look at it right away. And I was, I don't know, probably another half hour later, I went and looked at it and it was like 80,000 views or something. And I was like, Holy cow, that's insane. <laughs> And by the time I woke up the next morning, it was over a million. Damn. Like, That's crazy. And so my buddy come in by the time I got the shop opened at noon on Sunday. And I think we were, I think we were close to 2 million at that point. And uh, he's like, dude, I'm like, it's funny, but like 2 million people have watched me punch myself in the face. Like I feel kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you're popular now. Right, but and, and dude, for weeks, people would come in and be like, hey, I saw your TikTok, your TikTok come across. <laughs> so that's cool. And it was even more fun when he was in here. You know, he'd come hang out, and they'd be like, hey, I, hey, I saw you punch yourself in the face. He's like, yeah, I know everybody has, thanks. Right on. Yep, um, so that was that was fun, but I yes. had anything to take off. I had, a, I had another kid do it. I don't know, I think it was last summer. Yeah. And that one didn't that one didn't take off. And I asked him permission. I asked him permission. I was like, hey, do you care if I make a video out of this and put it on He's like, dude, I'm gonna put it on TikTok, so send it to me because I want to do it too. <laughs> and then yeah. I had I actually had a guy not that long ago 
that uh, was trying out a new bow and let go of a thumb release, and it bounced. It was a whole weight, and it was a carbon. Yeah. Um, but it, the release went to the right this time and bounced off the bridge on the riser. Yeah. Like the, that back bar that comes behind your hand. Yep. And it bounced back and hit him right square in the nose. Oh. And he, yeah, and he was bleeding and stuff. Was, my, my wife told me you definitely are not allowed to make a TikTok out of that. It's gonna, <laughs> you cannot make a TikTok out of something when somebody actually gets hurt. We we tr- we tried the TikTok thing. That's just that's just uh, we just don't have time for that stuff. It, we yeah. do a little bit, but nothing too crazy. Yeah, um, it's I don't I don't fully understand how to make it no. work. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not a here. video editor and stuff. I, I I struggle with Instagram, so yeah. Um, I, you know, I mean, I struggle even, they say you need to post something once a day or every other day and we, we, we we slack on that portion. Um, but so my wife did, my wife runs my, ran runs (laughs) my social media, Yeah. but she's, uh, she's got a a real, I say a real job. She's got a real job. (laughs) So she's pretty busy and we got technically, you know I mean? You're, you're in, your job is enjoyable so it is it's so it doesn't feel like a job <laughs> i tell people all the time like i feel like one day i'm gonna have to go to like this is surreal and someday i'm gonna have to go back to work yeah but man i hope not well the the bat the the worst part of that whole thing is you you have to thank your wife for all that because she's the one that it's, pushed you to do it's it 100 yeah it's 100 percent her fault <laughs> and i have to tell her that sometimes because yeah. so, she gets so when when you come when you come through the door and you're smiling and enjoyed your day, and, and then she comes in all tired and stuff, and you go, "You, yep. you did this. I'm just this is your you fault. Know, this is your, this is your fault, fault, bro." <laughs> yeah, I've had to, I've had to say that a lot of times, oh, and bet. it's especially like so September. It's insane in here. You know, sometimes on the weekends. Yeah. Sometimes I don't leave here till three o'clock in the morning. You know, if I got a couple of bow setups that I got to do that I, you know, because sometimes people come in, and there'll be fifteen people in line and there's me and if i'm most of the time i've got some help in here then yeah but it's still sometimes people just grab a bow and grab everything that you know if they're familiar and they've already shot it and they know what they want they'll grab that grab everything they want put with it and say hey (laughs) this is everything that i want i will come back tomorrow oh okay (laughs) yeah sometimes it's yeah sometimes it's you know a dozen arrows that you got a you know dozen bear shafts that hey this is how i want and so I've got service tickets, and I'll just tell them, hey, listen, write everything as detailed as you can. Yep. If I've got any questions, I'm going to call you, but it might be late. You know, it might be 11 o'clock tonight that I call you. But and most people are great about it, and so I'll just hang out and turn the radio up and get crazy and, you know, build a couple dozen arrows and set up a couple bows. and Enjoy, enjoy your job. Dude, it's so much fun. Even then, it's <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. It's so much fun. Right on. That's what, that's, you know what I mean? That's what everybody wishes their job would be. You know what I mean? So my hat's off that's to you on that. That's for sure. And I'll, uh, I'm going to thank your wife because, you know what I mean? I wouldn't have the bow I have now set up. So, right. And I'm totally yep. coming in here sooner than later because I'm just Perfect. to double, just to go through my bow one more time. Uh, we need yeah. To, we I check gotta, timing and make sure everything's still good. Yep. And then I got to bump the, the little guy's bow up a little bit too. He's got a little yeah. bit. He's getting a little big. He's man. He's beefing gonna, up. He's beefing up and get. He might be here in another year or so. He's gonna be bigger than me. Yeah. <laughs> he's growing. He's he's getting up there. That's for sure. Thank God. That's awesome. Hope, They're fun. They're so much fun, man. Yes. So so we got yeah on Facebook and yeah. Um, yeah. Facebook is the. Do you want to you want to throw best. your number out there a few times? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, the shop's number is 231-388-4051. Right and that info is on Facebook, too. You okay. can just I think there's a button you can click to just call. And if anybody so. is listening to this podcast right now, um, I'll also share probably in the next two, three weeks, I'll make sure I share their page so it's most recent for this podcast. And then just keep an eye open on our uh, page because throughout the year we always um, we always share Brian's uh, information and stuff. So keep well, an eye you. open. And um, hey, I appreciate talking with you. And like I said, if we come down as a group, Jake, Elvin, and I were we're planning on bringing the podcast gear again. So 
uh, yeah. when we come down to talk bow and set up bows and shoot and stuff, we'll we'll have you on again. That'd be awesome. So it's a little bit more fun when we have a couple extra guys and then the stories just right. start roaming. I mean, we're going right. on two hours right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. On that note, there, um, I think we're uh, we're gonna call her a night, and yeah, I I appreciate the talk, I appreciate the stories, I uh, like I said, I appreciate the bow setup, that's for sure. And, um, of course, buddy, that is exactly what I'm here for. Hell yeah, I appreciate this opportunity. I'll um, do this, I'll do this anytime you'd like. Yeah, and if anybody stops in, make sure you shout out and uh, tell Brian, hey, we uh, we listened to you on the podcast. Uh, yeah, and um, that way he kind of knows and. And like I said, we're gonna shoot. Like uh, we've had, uh, we have had a couple fishing ones, Brian. But uh, um, for the most part, on all the podcasts I've been um, that I've uh, hosted, I've shouted mm-hmm. out um, Untamed Archery. So I so I have heard that. <laughs> have you? Okay. Right yes, on. I had a guy, a uh, guy that works at another shop actually, said, "Hey, you do the bows for the." Michigan Gone Wild guys, don't you? I said, yeah, we built one a couple of years ago. He's like, yeah, I heard that on their podcast. I was oh, like, right oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so I appreciate that, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and it's no, I mean, we're both two small companies trying to get big. So you know, I mean, right. All the little baby steps that we can take, we're gonna we're gonna help each other out. So yeah, but well, and if that guy, that guy that told me that, if he hears this. Thank you, because I appreciate hearing that kind of stuff too. You know, right on. I love hearing. You know, when somebody hears about me from something, it's really nice to get that feedback. Yeah, and it, for you know, for both of us to know that that, and, that is getting through to the listeners. Like I said before, um, if anybody's out there looking for a down the earth, great place to set up your bow, um, he has bows for sale. He's got parts. He's got the setup for everything you can take your whole family you could take your wife take your kids the kids can play the wife can sit in the corner watch you do your thing um they got a great um would you say it was 20 yards yep 20 yards indoor indoor range um brian gets right down in depth i mean he is the he gets right into every bolt that comes off that bow He's right into it, every bit of it. So if anybody's looking for a place to get your bow set up, old bow, new bow, uh, check out Definitely. these guys at Untamed Archery, and they he just does an amazing job. And uh, like I said, yeah, I appreciate having you on. And like uh, sometime this summer, like we we come in to shoot and stuff, we're gonna have you on again. That'd be awesome, buddy. I'd love that. So. Uh, hopefully the rest of your night is good, and I am going to call it a night. All right, buddy. Sounds good. I hope your night is good as well. I right, appreciate it, boss. I'll talk to you. Yep. All right, we'll talk soon. All right, bye. Bye. What just happened? I don't know, man. Those are the moments right there. Make you feel the most alive. Look at that freaking brute. That's a four-year-old buck. I just shot the biggest buck I ever had. In Michigan! of a child on Michigan Gone Wild, Michigan Gone Wild, Michigan Gone Wild.